What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Wednesday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast with me, Matt Peralt, at Sports Talk Matt, to follow me across all socials. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast amidst this ice cold month of December. Man, when you're up three nothing, I almost punted out of it. I almost said, you know what? There's no way. This is the dead cat bounce for Ottawa. There's no way they're going to blow a three nothing lead, but maybe we just take the flyer. It was like plus four or five hundred or something. I can't remember the exact price, but it was worth it. Didn't do it. It's like, nah, not gonna happen. Can't. It did. Four consecutive goals. Three in the third period. Three in the third period. I mean, it was 3-1 going into the third period. They gave up three goals, lost the game 4-3. Uh, this is just the way that I'm running. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way that this is going. It's really brutal. I was right to be to be wary. The Providence game went the game, you know, I talked about it last night. I thought the length of Providence may be a problem. If the shots weren't falling, the dunk, which is now called the Amico Pavilion, an incredibly hard place to play in college basketball. I highly recommend going to a game there. If you never have, highly recommend it. Really fun. So that was not too big of a shocker with that loss. The Bruins going over was a little bit of a shocker. We got Nashville right. I don't know if you guys were following along on that, but I went one in one of those first periods, but under on that. And then the, I forget the other, the third bet. What was the other bet? Um, the bit we got wrong. I forget the bit we got wrong. We went 0-2 in hockey, and then 1-1, right? Yeah, 0-2, 0-2 in hockey, and then 1-1. We got one right with the team total for Drake. That came in. Oh, and then Providence. Right, so there we go. Yeah, so the, there's your three losses. So 1-3. So down a little over two units on the night. I mean, it's just been a, a absolute disaster. I mean, it's been, we're, I think I'm down 15 units over the last, or in the month of December. We came into the month up 45 units, somewhere in that range, up 41, 40, 42 units going into the month. We're down to like 25, up 25 units. It's still really good to be up 25 units, but hockey has been really bad. I, I'm now way underwater with hockey. I got to figure out what's going on with the NHL and maybe take a break until after Christmas because it's just, it's so wonky and it's just, it's such a crapshoot right now. It's very hard to watch and predict what's been going on. We got to find one of those teams that just gets on a roll and we just start betting it and betting it and betting it kind of to make it back. I think I'm down like six units in the NHL over the course of the whole year, not this season, but the course of the, course of the entire 2023. We will reset, by the way. Somebody asked me that in the Discord channel about the record. Uh, we will reset. End of the year will be a blank slate, okay? So we'll end the year, and we'll say, hey, this is what the year did. And we'll say, here, I'll give you a full recap of everything that we did. But we will start fresh on January 1st. We'll restart it all for 2024. So you'll see where we are with the podcast for the year. So just if you're curious, somebody was curious about that. So we will end it. End of the year, we will wrap up 2023. Uh, the what I was gone for seven months. This podcast started in July of 2020. So what three years of this podcast of me doing this. So, you know, hopefully we get back to some winning ways. He, hopefully we end this. I love the college basketball slate tonight. I've been waiting for today. There are so many good games to get into. I'm going to give you three official plays and then two other plays you can make as well that I'm not as high on that. I'm a little bit shaky on and I can't, figure out exactly what I want to bet, but I'm going to tell you about those games here in just one second, but remember this, this podcast being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com. you got to use that promo code JUICE at checkout to save $30. Minimum purchase may be required. And this podcast is also being brought to you by our friends at Fanimal. If you're looking for tickets during this holiday season, this is a really cool app to use, website to use, because the price you see is the price you pay with Fanimal. Hidden fees suck. There are no hidden fees. This is what they do. They have tickets to everything. Concerts, festivals, football games, basketball games, everything. They've got the patented group purchasing system that if you're with your buddies, with your family over the holidays, and you're like, man, Uncle Tom's going to stiff me. I know it. This is awful. Or Cousin Jimmy's just going to leave me hanging here. Nope. Doesn't happen. You don't commit until your friends do, you go and split the payments up really easily by selecting your seats, 
Pick how many tickets you want for yourself and then send the link to your friends. Once they join the group, everybody gets charged separately and you have your tickets. Great customer service. Check out Fanimal. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com or download the Fanimal app and use the promo code FANIMALJUICE for $20 off your first purchase. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Fanimal Juice, the promo code to save $20. All right, let's get into North Carolina and Oklahoma. This is going to be fun. This is a game where, for the Tar Heels, they are slight favorites. Minus two and a half in this game against Oklahoma. Oklahoma is undefeated. Now, the Tar Heels all-time, they're 3-0. and Never lost to Oklahoma. They haven't played since 2009, though, in the NCAA tournament. This game's being played at the Spectrum Center. North Carolina has done very well historically, but recently they've lost two games in the last five years in Charlotte. But overall, they've won 86% of their games. This is a really good... I love reading beat writers, and and the Fayetteville Observer has a great article about this game, breaking it down as to what's looking at, you know, the, the stats going into this game. 15 of the 17 games been played in Charlotte for North Carolina have been played at the Spectrum Center. Okay, so this is... The Jumpman Invitational, all right? These are schools that are sponsored by Nike, by Jumpman, so they get together here. This game is big for North Carolina. They need to get going. Oklahoma hasn't lost yet, okay? Oklahoma's been really good. Oklahoma's been a problem for a lot of teams. And Oklahoma, that right now, 18th in Ken Palm right now. They are... Uh, North, in North Carolina is 20th on, on, on Ken Palm. Their schedule has been really impressive. They beat Iowa. They beat USC. They beat Providence. They beat Providence at home, beat them pretty good. Uh, they beat Arkansas, 79-70 on a neutral court. This has been a very nice start. Carolina, on the other hand, not a great start for North Carolina. They're off back-to-back losses. They lost to UConn, 87-76. They lost to Kentucky, 87-83. This is a pro-North Carolina crowd. This is going to be a must-win environment, okay? I think North Carolina plays really well. I think they play up-tempo here in this game, and I think they have an opportunity here to not just get a win, but to really kind of right the ship against a team that is in the top 100. I love this spot for Carolina here. Ken Palm has this as a one-point victory. The number was one when it opened up. It's been bet up to two and a half. Um, As long as it's under three, I'm comfortable OU's defense is really, really good. They are top 10 in adjusted efficiency defensively, but North Carolina's the number 10 offense for efficiency. Effective field goal percentage, OU fourth in the country. Tough. You got effective field goal percentage for North Carolina, 102nd, but what they do well is shoot the ball from behind the arc, top 100. They're not great around the arc, but they hit their free throws, which is really key, I think, when it comes to covering numbers in college basketball. They're top 40 in the country in free throw percentage. Defensively, Carolina's good. In OU's offense is top 34 for efficiency. Their 12th for effective field goal percentage is how they've kind of run through here. But I think when it comes to backs against the wall, this is a game where, look, (laughs) you need your best players to step up. You need your point guards to be really, really good here for North Carolina, and I can't see them losing three games in a row. That's why the first number went from one and a half to two and a half. I'm going to follow it. North Carolina, minus two and a half. It is neutral, but it's going to feel like a home game for the Tar Heels here against Oklahoma. I think they'll give the give Oklahoma their first loss of the season and a big win for North Carolina here. Game number two. This has been fun, by the way. I, I really had, had a good time breaking all these games tonight. Alabama, Arizona. It's a neutral. This is a late game. This is at the Footprint Center. This is where the Suns play. This is not, game, not in Tucson. Alabama, this is incredible. Alabama has played a neutral against Purdue, a true road game against Creighton, and now a neutral against Arizona. That is the number two, number nine, and number three ranked teams, according to Kempom.com. All right, this is you don't do this. This is a unbelievable juggernaut to go through. Alabama is either catching seven and a half or eight. The number was six and a half. It's been bet up. Okay, I understand why people are betting on Arizona. 
Arizona is one of the best teams against the number this year in college basketball. I mean, they have won and they have covered consistently. However, this is the number one most efficient offense in college basketball in the game against the Creighton Blue Jays did nothing to change my mind. When I watched them play, I was like, okay, these guys can really go. They've got length. They've got size underneath. They've got great leadership, good guard play. Nate Oates' team is phenomenal. They can drill the three. And you know what Arizona has a tough time doing? Stopping the three. 20th in three-point percentage for Nate Oates' team. They bomb it. Arizona is 237th in three-point defense. They do not stop the three. This game's going to be up-tempo. I don't mind betting over in this game, okay? It wouldn't shock me at all if this game flies over because Arizona's got size and their number six adjusted efficiency. They're also 10th in effective field goal percentage, which is what Bama has, has trouble with, okay? I think this game comes down to the wire. This number eight is too high. I know Alabama is going through a juggernaut, but back-to-back -back losses, just like North Carolina, same situation, backed against the wall. They don't want to lose a third straight game, okay? They're going to fight like crazy. And yes, it'll be a pro Arizona crowd. No debating there. But it's an NBA arena, and it's a neutral. I think the tide keeps this close, okay? They almost knocked off Creighton in a really tough environment in a very similar arena type size, you know, NBA type arena. That's what the Jays play in front of. This is an NBA arena. Good sight lines for shooting. I'll take the points here. Alabama plus eight up against Arizona for 1.1 units. Caesars has this tonight. Look around, shop around, find the eight. But I like Alabama to keep this game close tonight. Alabama plus eight up against Arizona. And bet number three, well, I I toyed with the idea of doing a parlay, guys. I really did. I was like, maybe I should do a parlay. I was like, eh, I'm not going to. But you can. I may round robin these games. I like them a lot. Did you know that Radford is one of the best teams in college basketball against the number? They're 8-3 and three ATS against number five of their last six games they have covered. Also have gone over in five, uh, in six of their last seven games. West Virginia is 1-4 ATS. And West Virginia is laying six and a half points. Now, I know they're at home, but Radford is a team. This feels like this is just because one's a Big 12 team and one is not. And I don't know if people really know a lot about Radford, but I know enough to go, huh, these numbers are really going to be interesting. And I think this number actually will come down. I, I, I mean, there are 156 with Ken Palm. They've played some pretty good teams. They've won four games in a row. You know, they lost to VCU badly. They lost to North Carolina pretty bad, 86 to 70. But West Virginia has not exactly been a world beater. I mean, West Virginia lost to my school. They lost to UMass in their last game. They lost to Pitt. They lost to St. John's. They lost to Virginia. They lost to SMU. Their wins are against Drexel, Bellamine, uh, Bellarmine, Jacksonville State, and Missouri State. Should they be six and a half point favorites at home? To anybody? Uh, look, Radford's got a top 130 efficient offense, top 140 effective field goal percentage. West Virginia, again, offensively, they're just not good. They're 312th effective field goal percentage. They're 331st in two-point percentage. They're 218th in three-point percentage. Radford may win this game outright. I mean, West Virginia is 131 on Ken Palm, Radford is 156. This number should be way closer than it is. If you want to bet, take a money line flyer on Radford, I don't mind it at all here. But yeah, the true home game, true road game for Radford, but I'm going to take the points. Radford, plus six and a half, 1.1 units down on that. Okay? So those are my three official plays for the podcast. Oak, uh, uh, North Carolina, minus two and a half against, against uh, Oklahoma. We're taking plus six and a half for Radford up against West Virginia and plus eight for Alabama up against Arizona. If you want more, here are the more picks. Evansville is hosting Tennessee Tech. Now, Anna's, Evansville team total is 77 and a half. The numbers for Tennessee Tech are unbelievable. We, we did this with Drake, okay? Another Valley team. Last night, Drake team total went over because they're playing Alcorn State. Tennessee Tech has Alcorn State-type numbers defensively. 
They are 315th in adjusted defensive efficiency, 310th in effective field goal percentage, 339th in turnover, 261st in three-point percentage defense, 312th in two-point percentage defense. They don't, I mean... I mean, they, they don't do much. <laughs> they just don't do much. And offensively, they do even less. I mean, they're 295th in efficient offense. They're 225th in effective field goal percentage. Evansville defense is not good. So the, the, the one worry is that, like, Evansville doesn't play defense either. But Evansville is 77th in the country in adjusted tempo. Evansville wants to play fast. Tennessee Tech doesn't. They play slow. Okay? So that's why I'm not making this official because – if Tennessee Tech just sits on the basketball, it may be hard to get enough possessions to get over 77 and a half points. Uh, Tennessee Tech just gave up. They won their last two games. They gave up 67 and 74. But in the games that they lost, like to North Alabama, they gave up 86. Uh, against Lipscomb, they gave up 96. Against Tennessee, they gave up 80. All right? So that my only concern is that Evansville is... They're the ones going to have to push tempo. They just scored 98 against Tennessee Martin, 70 against Bellamine or Bellam, Bellarmine, uh, 55 against BYU. They got killed against BYU. They scored 91 against Northern Iowa, which was nice to see them score like that. Only 78 against Missouri State. So you get my point. I like this. I don't love this for Evansville. So I'm not going to make this official, but if you want a little extra and if you're in the Midwest and you're an Indiana person and you want to watch some Valley basketball, Evansville team total over 77 and a half. Now you're probably going, Matt, you went through this whole podcast, been listening now for almost 20 minutes and you haven't talked about Creighton. Here's the reason why the Creighton Blue Jays tonight will retire Doug McDermott's number. This is a really big moment. It's a wild moment for me because I started talking to Doug McDermott when he was a sophomore in high school. The reason is because he was the teammate of Harrison Barnes Harrison Barnes, the Little Cyclones in Ames, were one of the best college basketball, one of the best high school basketball teams in the country. I believe their record was 56 and 0 over the last two years between their junior and senior years. I was in the gym when Harrison Barnes committed to North Carolina. He did this really weird Zoom thing that didn't come through, but Roy Williams landed the number one recruit in the country, which was Harrison Barnes. He was always the teammate of Harrison Barnes. Nobody paid attention to Doug. But Doug just kept on scoring and scoring and scoring. When Dana Altman was recruiting him to Creighton, he offered him a gray shirt, meaning he'd pay the first way. He was committed to Northern Iowa. And then Dana left and went to Oregon, and his dad, Greg, got the Creighton job. He brought Doug with him, and the rest is history. Became the Naismith Player of the Year. Was unbelievable for the Creighton Blue Jays. Set record after record after record. The ceremony will be before the game. Greg McDermott will be part of this ceremony which is not always the case when you have these things. I mean, <laughs> McDermott ended his career with an NCAA record, NCAA record 135 double-figure scoring games, and he wrapped up with 3,150 points, fifth all-time in NCAA history. He won the Oscar Robertson. He won the J.R. Wooden Award. He won the Naismith Trophy in 2013-2014, led the country in scoring. Jays were a three-seed. This is remarkable. I, I've... I've Interviewed Doug McDermott more times than I can remember. So, yeah, I think the Jays win tonight and cover that seven points. They've been very good against the number. Nova's had tough times on the road this year. But I'm way too committed. I like the over in the game, okay? And the game goes over. But Nova's going to take the air out of the ball. And I know what they're going to try to do. They don't want to run with the Jays. They want to grind it. So, much like last night we saw with Providence, Nova's going to do the same thing except Nova's on the road, Providence was at home. And if the building gets rocking, and the building is going to be rocking early, first half over, love it. First half, Creighton Blue Jays, like it a lot, okay? But I'm too emotionally connected to this team and too emotionally connected to this game to, get, to tell you guys to trail because I might be dead wrong, okay? I might be way off. I've been ice cold. And when I'm this committed, emotionally invested in a team and a game, it's problematic for me to say, go ahead and guys bet this. But there's a variety of ways. I do think the Jays cover the seven, and the game goes over 141. First half over. First half Jays laying three and a half, four. All plays you can make in the game. But it's it's going to be a really cool moment. This is an awesome game in the Big East. Awesome environment. You're, I mean, out of the gate, there's going to be so much emotion in the building. For I, I mean, I've never seen, and I don't know of another player 
you know, the last guy that got his number retired was Kyle Korver. And Kyle was big. I mean, Kyle was a really big Blue Jay, but he wasn't like Doug. He wasn't to the point where he took the Jays from a Valley school into the Big East and became one of the best programs in the Big East because of Doug McDermott. He was a transformational player, still in the NBA, playing with the Spurs. Unbelievable stuff. So just that's why the Jays are not the official play, but I gave you enough plays if you want to look at it. Okay, officially, Carolina minus 2.5, Radford plus 6.5, Alabama plus 8 here for our three plays today for the Daily Juice. Hopefully we have a good day betting college basketball. I'm staying off of the NBA, staying off of hockey. My name is Matt Peralta. You guys follow me on Twitter, X, all the socials, at Sports Talk Matt every morning. The Daily Juice podcast always being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com.